throughout all my life and with all my heart. Queen Elizabeth II has been sitting on the throne for as long as many of us can remember. I shall strive to be worthy of your trust. She's overseen major political changes and is the longest reigning British monarch in history. But despite her popularity and power, Queen Elizabeth won't be around forever as much as we hate to say it. This has caused many people to start wondering what exactly will happen when she passes. But my whole life, whether it be long or short, shall be devoted to your service. Who is next in line for the throne and how will this change the complex dynamic of the British royal family? Some claim Prince William and Prince Harry have already started feuding and things could get worse before they get better. Many people enjoy keeping up with the fashion of the royal family or learning about the drama in their personal lives. It's easy to see the British royal family as one that is mired in long-standing traditions. But that doesn't mean things will never change. Queen Elizabeth herself has set forth some edicts which will drastically impact what happens when her rule comes to an end. There are some strict rules which govern the line of succession for the royal family and breaking them can cause you to be disqualified from the throne. In order to qualify for the throne, you need to adhere to certain religious beliefs. The King or Queen of England holds another prestigious title and that is Head of the Church of England. The royal family does have an intriguing history of various religious beliefs, but now Protestant Anglican is the status quo. But in the past, simply being a member of the church wasn't enough to guarantee a spot in line for the throne. For centuries, members of the royal family were forbidden from marrying those of Catholic faith. If they were to someday ascend to the throne, they would become the head of the Church of England, and having a spouse of different religion wouldn't be permitted. But soon, time would phase out an integral part of this seemingly steadfast rule. This rule had been in place since the Act of Settlement had passed in 1701. But hundreds of years later, in 2011, the summit of 16 countries would declare that rule no longer just. In 2013, the Succession to the Crown Act was passed altering the requirements to the throne forever. It was determined that members of the royal family can now marry those of varying faiths, without sacrificing their claim to the throne. The only issue now comes when children are brought into the equation. If a couple has children, they are to be brought up Protestant Anglican, or the children will not be eligible for the throne. Although this seemed like a step forward to some, there are many who feel the ruling is still unjust. Some believe it's unfair that the king or queen is not allowed the same religious freedoms as the average citizen. Regardless, as of right now, a potential heir must follow certain religious beliefs to qualify for the throne. Another way a potential heir can qualify is via their descent from the reigning king or queen. This is another time-honored tradition which has changed dramatically in recent years. The Act of Settlement of 1701 determined that only legitimate descendants have any claim to the throne. This means children who are biologically a part of the royal family do indeed qualify. However, spouses who married into the royal family are completely ineligible. For example, Prince George may be king someday, but his mother, Kate Middleton, can never be queen on her own. The only way she could hold the title would be if her husband, Prince William, takes the throne. Without him, she has absolutely no place in the line of succession. In addition, the phrase legitimate extends beyond biological heirs and requires they adhere to certain qualifications. Children who are adopted or born out of wedlock do not have a place in the line of succession. Even if their parents subsequently marry, the child may be legitimized but will still not be eligible for the throne. For a long period of time, this descent qualification had a strong male preference. This meant that male heirs took preference over female ones. Queen Elizabeth was not yet a queen when she had her first child, Prince Charles, in 1948. This made him second in line for the throne behind his mother. When her daughter, Princess Anne, was born, she was third in line for the throne, but she wouldn't hold her position for very long. When her brothers, Prince Andrew and Prince Edward, were born, Princess Anne became even less eligible. Over the course of her life, Princess Anne went from being second in line after her mother became queen to being a current 13th. However, the latest generation of the royal family is free of the male preference criteria. This was a change put forth by Queen Elizabeth herself, and all things considered, it's quite progressive. The Succession to the Crown Act of 2013 determined succession to the crown no longer depended on gender. 
The Queen's granddaughter, Princess Charlotte, was the first female member of the royal family to benefit from this change. When her little brother, Prince Louis, was born, it didn't affect Princess Charlotte's place in line for the throne. Currently, the heir apparent to the throne is Queen Elizabeth's eldest son, Prince Charles. After Prince Charles is his eldest son, Prince William. Then there's the children of Prince William and Kate Middleton, Prince George, Princess Charlotte, and Prince Louis in that order. Prince William's younger brother, Prince Harry, is currently sixth in line. Regardless of the gender of his child with Meghan Markle, they will be seventh in line for the throne. Many people seem to be excited for the day when Prince William takes the throne, but they'll have to be patient. Unless Prince Charles passes away or shockingly decides to abdicate the throne, Prince William is going to have to wait his turn. Still, it's not hard to see why many would prefer to see Prince William rule in his father's stead. Prince Charles is much older and is already well past the age of retirement. There was also the unpleasantness surrounding his marriage to the late Princess Diana, who was cherished by many people all over the world. This caused many people to form an unpleasant opinion of Prince Charles. All right, I know. And some would be peeved to see him take on a king's title. Uh, can, I, can I have one glass of water, please? However, when it comes to the royal family, such sentiments do not come before the time-honored tradition. And it's about representing timeless values. I think it's very important. It's, um, you've got to mix the traditional with the, the modern. Prince William is well-versed in the importance of following the royal rules. He stated the idea of him becoming king instead of his father is ridiculous and something which will never happen. There is the, the time and space in the future to, um, to, to take on more and develop more. Still, unless William should perish before Charles, he will have his chance to be king someday. But his brother Prince Harry is a different story entirely. Not only is his older brother ahead of him in the line of succession, but so are his nieces and nephews. Prince Harry may be in the single digits when it comes to the line of succession, but it's exceptionally unlikely that he will ever become king. In order for that to happen, Charles, William, George, Charlotte, and Louis would either have to all perish or abdicate the throne. Needless to say, the odds of this are incredibly slim. But that isn't necessarily bad news for Prince Harry. To outsiders, being a member of the royal family can seem glamorous. The world of international travel, tiaras, and glamorous dinner parties seems alluring, but it does come with a social fee. Many members of the royal family don't hold jobs, and not because they are already wealthy, but because they don't have time. Prince William tried to maintain a career and donate his money to charity, but ended up being overwhelmed with his royal obligations. But if I can't give my time to my children as well, then uh, I worry about their future. As Queen Elizabeth gets older, it's forced Prince William and Prince Harry to step up and help perform royal duties. And unlike people who would love to become a prince or princess, Harry and William never had a choice in the matter. I take my, my duties and my responsibilities to my family very seriously. While Prince William grew up knowing he would be king someday, his brother grew up dreading the idea of being king. According to Prince Harry, nobody in the royal family truly wants to become king or queen. They do so because of a sense of duty and loyalty and because they believe it's a responsibility they're born into. He believes his family's actions are done for the greater good and not because of personal wants and needs. But just because he isn't going to be king doesn't mean Prince Harry isn't aware of his royal privilege. He believes eventually his popularity will be eclipsed by the next generation of the family. Until then, he intends to use his fame to champion charitable causes he finds important while raising awareness to issues close to his heart. For a long time, Prince Harry was only a doting uncle, but now he's gearing up to be a father of his own. When his child is born, they will be in the same position as their father, a member of the royal family who will likely never actually take the throne. Sources claim both Prince Harry and his wife Meghan Markle are actually happy about this rather than being disappointed. They want their child to have as normal a life as possible and intend to do everything in their power to make it so. According to Prince Harry, his mother also wanted her children to live relatively normal lives and was successful in this regard. Harry says people would be surprised to learn just how standard his upbringing was under his mother's watchful eye. Still, Harry acknowledges that the monarchy is a force for good. He's given some thoughts as to what will happen after the end of his grandmother's long reign. He says, we want to carry on the positive atmosphere that the Queen has achieved for over 60 years, but we won't be trying to fill her boots. Prince Harry isn't the only member of the royal family who feels this way towards the throne. 
Prince Andrew has two daughters, Princess Beatrice and Princess Eugenie, who are 8th and 9th in line for the throne respectively. Despite being princesses, they're under no illusions about their chances of ever ending up as queen. Instead, they have chosen to pursue relatively normal lives instead of lives dedicated to royal duties. Princess Eugenie even has an Instagram account, which is supposed to be against the rules for members of the royal family. Meghan Markle had to delete hers when she married Prince Harry, but Princess Eugenie refuses to budge. She knows she's in a unique position in the royal family and is leaning away from the obligations of her royal roots. And if her uncle Prince Charles does end up on the throne, as expected, her royal duties might diminish even further. It's no secret that the royal family is far from perfect and the various members don't always get along. There's reportedly always been a rivalry between brothers Prince Charles and Prince Andrew. The rumor is that Prince Andrew resents Prince Charles for being next in line to the throne. But allegedly, Prince Charles looks down on Prince Andrew because of some scandals he's brought upon the family over the years. The two brothers have regularly stood each other up for important events over the years, which has caused many eyebrows to raise. Charles famously excluded Andrew from his appearance at the 2012 Diamond Jubilee. His wife Camilla chose not to show up for the wedding of Andrew's daughter, Princess Eugenie. Not only was she a no-show, but her excuse was that she was entertaining guests at home. And unfortunately for Prince Andrew, Prince Charles is only going to grow more powerful. Although he hasn't yet assumed the throne, he's made some statements about what he has in store for his least favorite brother. The two brothers have never been close, with Charles being over a decade older than Andrew. In addition, many royal family experts claim Andrew has always been his mother's favorite child. With this in mind, it's no wonder the two brothers don't exactly have a close relationship relationship with one another. Charles has talked about slimming down the roles of royal family members outside of his own children and grandchildren, of course. Allegedly, Andrew is unhappy about his family being pushed around by Charles. Princess Eugenie even had to postpone her wedding to her longtime partner because of Meghan Markle and Prince Harry's wedding. Charles doesn't find Andrew's actions to be in line with what is expected of the royal family and wants to push him further out of the spotlight. And Charles's long wait for the throne likely hasn't improved his disposition. In 2012, he joked about being impatient to take on the role which he has been raised for his entire life. Charles sarcastically said his time is running out even before he becomes king. During her life, Queen Elizabeth has reportedly struggled to maintain peace between her children. But when she's gone, there will be a serious shift in power dynamics and it will be interesting to see how it all plays out. The Queen's grandchildren seem to be even less interested in the throne and the royal lifestyle than their parents. It's possible the monarchy is evolving and in a few generations may be much different than it has been over Queen Elizabeth's extremely long rule. While the rules of the royal family succession can be confusing, so can the royal titles. Many people wonder why Queen Elizabeth's husband is called Prince Philip instead of King Philip. The reason for this is interesting and perhaps a little bit outdated according to some. There is more than one way to be a queen, at least as far as titles are concerned. A queen consort is the wife of a reigning king. She holds roles because of the position for her husband. In contrast, Queen Elizabeth is a queen regnant because her right to the throne is due to her royal blood. Regardless of who she's married to, she's the reigning monarch. If a queen regnant marries a man, he's not considered to be a king but instead is called a prince consort. When Prince William becomes king, it's expected Kate Middleton will become a queen. However, the situation with Prince Charles' wife is slightly more complicated. When she married Prince Charles, she had the right to take on the title of princess but decided not to. She didn't want to cause a conflict with the memory of Charles' first wife and mother of his children, Princess Diana. Instead, she took on the title Duchess of Cornwall. But according to tradition, when Charles becomes king, she should become queen. However, there are rumors that she will instead be known as Prince Princess Consort. The situation regarding how Charles and Camilla got together is scandalous and the Queen put stipulations on allowing them to get married. One of the drawbacks to being high in the line of succession is that you can't marry without the Queen's permission. The Queen reportedly gave her permission begrudgingly and with the stipulation that Camilla would not hold the title of Queen. There's also the general public to contend with and many do not like the idea of Camilla holding the title of Queen. But once Queen Elizabeth is no longer around, this will be a decision made by Charles and only time will tell what he chooses. When Prince William and Kate Middleton got married, only their first child was guaranteed the title of prince or princess. 
However, the Queen decreed that all children born of William and Kate would be given those royal titles. The rules are a bit different for Prince Harry and Meghan Markle because their child will be further down in the line of succession. Because the baby's parents are a duke and duchess, the child will be an earl if it's a boy or a lady if it's a girl. However, this isn't set in stone. The Queen could choose to grant Harry and Meghan's child the title of prince or princess if she chooses to. The subject of their child's nationality is also the subject of much speculation. Currently, Meghan Markle is a citizen of the United States. According to palace officials, she's going through the process of obtaining British citizenship, but the process is a lengthy one. It's unclear whether she will be obtaining dual citizenship or renouncing her United States citizenship entirely. Should she choose to retain her United States citizenship, her child will have dual nationality as well. Because Queen Elizabeth has reigned for so long, many people don't remember a time before she was queen. Prior to Queen Elizabeth taking the throne, it was held by her father, King George VI. In 1952, Elizabeth and her husband, Prince Philip, were on tour in Kenya when they learned of his passing. Because she didn't have appropriate mourning clothes, Elizabeth was forced to stay contained in her plane when she arrived home. An assistant had to rush to the palace, acquire appropriate black garments, and return. Because of this, it's now a rule that members of the royal family must pack a suitable mourning outfit when traveling. It may seem strange to declare what people should wear after suffering a loss, but there is much tradition and ceremony surrounding the passing of a monarch. In the immediate aftermath of her passing, there will be a flurry of activity, most of which the public will have no idea about. The royal palace has a plan in place for what will need to happen immediately after Queen Elizabeth's passing, and it even has a code name. Operation London Bridge will commence and the palace will fall into a sort of organized chaos. Understandably, it will take a bit of time before the general public is informed because there will simply be too much to get done. When King George VI perished, his passing was conveyed with the code phrase Hyde Park Corner in order to prevent people from finding out. When the Queen passes, the Prime Minister will be told that London Bridge is down. News will travel outside of the United Kingdom, reaching the 15 governments where the Queen is also the head of state. Next are the 36 other nations in the Commonwealth, which the Queen has served for decades. Higher-ranking government officials will learn of her passing first, including governors, ambassadors, and of course, Prime Ministers. But don't worry, it won't be long before the tragic news of the Queen's passing is shared with the world. The information will be dispersed in both traditional and more modern ways. According to British tradition, a footman dressed in carefully appointed mourning clothes will emerge from Buckingham Palace. He will carefully affix a notice to the gates lined in black edges. This simple notice will declare the somber passing of Queen Elizabeth, but there will be other sources of this grim news. Websites as well as social media will likely post announcements sooner rather than later. Rumors about the royal family spread like wildfire once they start, so it's important to get the correct information out quickly. Poor Prince Philip has had the whole world thinking he was deceased due to a random rumor which was clearly untrue. The palace needs everything in place before going public and announcing the news on their own terms. It may seem grim, but the passing of the Queen is something news outlets have spent years preparing for. As soon as the news hits, they need to be ready with touching tributes to the late, great Queen Elizabeth, and that means doing plenty of prep work. It's said Time already has 11 solid days of coverage ready to go at a moment's notice. Other outlets have signed exclusive contracts with royal experts so they can interview them as soon as possible. Even BBC has a transmission system in place for such an occasion. Their radio alert transmission system, or RATS, is an alarm designed to withstand attacks to the nation's infrastructure. It leaves no doubt that a message to the people can get transmitted, but it's hardly ever used. According to reporters, most staff have never used or even experienced an instance of rats in action. But although having a contingency plan for the passing of the Queen seems to be a both practical and pessimistic ordeal, it isn't a popular one. Some journalists admit to feeling uncomfortable speculating on how the Queen's life will end. News outlets even practice mock storylines theorizing the various ways the event might happen. But no matter how much they try to prepare, nothing ever goes completely to plan. In the period of mourning which follows the passing of a monarch, tensions are high and the utmost sensitivity is required. 
When Queen Elizabeth, the Queen Mother, passed away in 2002, one anchor was heavily criticized for wearing a maroon tie instead of a black one. And sometimes these contingency plans can backfire in a huge way. The BBC runs drills where they pretend to cover the passing of the Queen, but of course, these rehearsals are kept private. Well, usually. In 2015, one journalist didn't know he was a part of a rehearsal and tweeted that the Queen had perished. To make matters worse, the Queen just so happened to be paying a visit to a hospital that day. The news spread quickly, and soon everyone was convinced we had seen the latest of Queen Elizabeth. Information regarding the passing of the Queen won't be limited to Britain. Queen Elizabeth is someone with worldwide influence and international recognition. While other countries may not react as strongly, it's safe to say their news segments will be dominated by the royal family's loss. Much will depend on whether the Queen's passing is sudden or expected. When her mother passed away, she had time to call some friends and bid final farewells. She even took time to ensure her favorite horses were sent to new and caring owners. Wearing black in the days immediately following a tragedy seems like a fairly standard response. But the repercussions of the Queen's passing will extend far beyond mere fashion choices. It's expected that Britain will positively grind to a screeching halt for the 12 days following her passing. All stock markets and banks will most likely close their doors along with various other businesses. This will be far more than a mere convenience. It will impact the financial future of Britain. Both the funeral of Queen Elizabeth and the coronation of Prince Charles will become new formal national holidays. Everywhere you look, flags will be lowered to half-mast out of respect for the Queen. Bells will ring out in the streets from every church, including the famous tenor bell of Westminster Abbey. People in mourning will gather outside Buckingham Palace to pay their respects and commiserate with others. As for dealing with the practical aspects of the Queen's passing, there is also an in-depth plan for this as well. Should Queen Elizabeth perish while abroad, she will be transported to London in a coffin specially set aside for such an occasion. However, if she should pass away at her private residence, she will arrive via car at Buckingham Palace and will remain in the throne room. Her coffin will then be watched over by four grenadier guards. It's likely a formal ceremony called the Vigil of the Princes, which will take place during this time. The Queen's grandsons, Prince William and Prince Harry, will likely spend time standing vigil for their dear departed grandmother. The next matter of business will be the meeting of the Accession Council. This will take place away from members of the palace staff and the general public at St. James Palace. The Accession Council will formally declare the successor to the throne, Prince Charles. Charles will swear his undying loyalty not only to Parliament, but to the Church of England as well. But he won't be the only one making promises on this momentous occasion. Members of Parliament are forced to swear allegiance to the new monarch. After all of this takes place, operations will be suspended until after the official state funeral takes place. While most of these proceedings are predetermined, Charles will have an important choice to make. Many new monarchs choose a new name when they take the crown. Usually, they'll choose one with historical significance that honors a deceased family member. Queen Elizabeth's father was named Albert before ascending to the throne and became King George VI. The Queen chose to keep her own name when she took the throne, and it remains to be seen if Charles will do the same when his time comes. While history remembers the passing of centuries worth of royal family members, Queen Elizabeth is different. Not only has she enjoyed an incredibly long reign, but because of technological advances, she's more visible than any of her predecessors. When Princess Diana passed away unexpectedly, over a million bouquets were left outside of Buckingham Palace in her memory. Queen Elizabeth is no stranger to charity work and has supported over 600 charities during her time as queen. According to the Charities Aid Foundation, the Queen is one of the largest supporters of charities in the entire world. She supports 510 charities in Britain alone, including Cancer Research UK and the British Red Cross. The Queen has always been a huge supporter of community and civic issues, and her donations reflect this outlook. With her passing, these charities will lose a champion. But if Princess Diana's passing is any indication, it's likely many will step up in the Queen's absence. The Queen led by example when it came to championing causes, and her absence will be keenly felt in this regard. When Princess Diana passed away, her funeral was not deemed a national holiday, but the general public was no less bereaved because of this. Many businesses closed simply because it didn't feel right to remain open in light of this tragedy. 
It was all any television or radio stations were covering, and few people went into work. There were days of intense mourning, and it wasn't unusual to see people crying on the streets of Kensington. Such public displays of grief are unusual, but they became commonplace in the days after Diana's passing. It wouldn't be at all surprising if this situation happens again when Queen Elizabeth passes away. But how does Queen Elizabeth feel about all of this? Allegedly, the Queen has a realistic view of her own mortality and has taken the time to make preparations for her own funeral. It's common knowledge that the Queen is a huge dog lover, with a fondness of corgis especially. She's owned over 30 corgis in her lifetime, all descended from one named Susan, who she got as a present for her 18th birthday. Some of her dogs are Dorgies, which are a mix of Dachshund and a Corgi. But in 2012, the Queen stopped breeding and acquiring new dogs. She was worried about taking on more pups and not living long enough to raise them. Should her existing dogs outlive her, it's thought some staff members may take them in. It's well known that neither Prince Charles nor Prince William are fans of the Queen's dogs. Meghan Markle is known to be a huge dog lover, so it's possible she may want to take in one of the Queen's beloved pups if it comes down to it. The Queen also has a practical reason for finalizing details of her passing, and that's to ensure a smooth transition for her son, Prince Charles. It's no secret that Charles is far from the most well-loved member of the royal family. His disastrous relationship to Princess Diana as well as his infidelities were public knowledge. Their divorce was messy and he then married his affair partner. His approval ratings have always been low and most people seem to favor his children, Prince William and Prince Harry. When King George VI passed away, it took Queen Elizabeth 16 months to get her official coronation. Waiting that long for a king, as controversial as Charles would be, is a disaster from a public relations standpoint. Because of this, it's estimated Prince Charles will get his official coronation within three months of his mother's passing. There have long been rumors about the relationship between Charles and the Queen. It's no secret she is disapproved of his choices in the past, she even refused to attend his wedding to Camilla. Many speculated this was because she wasn't happy about the marriage. But surprisingly, the normally quiet queen clarified her position. She stated that her issue wasn't with the union, but rather the civil ceremony Charles and Camilla were taking part in. The queen takes her role as head of the church seriously and didn't feel right attending the ceremony. Regardless of her personal feelings for her eldest son, the queen knows what needs to be done and that a smooth transition is best for everyone. One reason the queen is eager to see power pass along in her family is because many fear the royal family might cease to exist without her. While there is no shortage of people who love the royal family, there are many who believe the monarchy is outdated. The Queen has a ceremonial role in Parliament, and laws require her stamp of approval. However, if Britain becomes a republic, their laws will no longer require the approval of King or Queen. Something this extreme is unlikely to happen, but it is a possibility. There are also many mundane changes which will have to take place during the switch from having a Queen to having a King. Of course, banknotes and coins are going to have to be changed to reflect the change in royalty. Currently, post boxes are imprinted with E2R in honor of the Queen, but they will have to be changed to C3R for Charles. Instances of Her Majesty will have to be changed to His Majesty, which can be a potentially large adjustment. This will likely be the last incident in quite some time in which there is a Queen Regent. After Charles, there is William and then George. Princess Charlotte would only take the throne if her brother passes away without leaving behind an heir. Of course, little Prince George is a long ways away from starting his own family. But regardless, it looks as though multiple generations of kings will take the throne before there's even the possibility of a queen. Although Prince William will have to wait to be king, he's going to be getting some new responsibilities as well. Although he's known colloquially as Prince William, he was dubbed William, Duke of Cambridge, at his wedding to Kate Middleton. It's not uncommon for dukedoms to be given to the sons and grandsons of the reigning monarch, and it's considered an honor. Right now, Prince Charles is the Prince of Wales, but he will have the option to grant the title to his son when he is king. Prince Charles is also the Duke of Cornwall, which is another honor he may pass on to his son. In Scotland, William will also have the honor of being the Duke of Rothesay, 
another gift from Charles. But unlike Charles becoming king, these changes aren't instantaneous. Prince William is going to have to wait until these honors are bestowed upon him by his father. And they're much more than simple titles. The Duchy of Cornwall is incredibly lucrative. It covers 135,000 acres of land and a hefty investment portfolio. It's been in the family since 1337 and includes farms, residences, commercial buildings, and lush natural resources. In 2017, the duchy paid out to Prince Charles to the tune of $27.3 million. All in all, it's thought the duchy is worth about $1.2 billion. Charles has been managing it since he was 21 years old, and many believe he will pass it on to William. As the second-born son of Prince Charles, Prince Harry won't receive any of the new titles and properties his brother most likely will, but this doesn't mean he won't have a wealth of new responsibilities. With the Queen gone and the same amount of work to go around, Harry is going to have to step things up. He's even admitted that he is well aware of how his duties will increase. It's likely Harry is going to have a heavy royal workload until Prince George, Princess Charlotte, and Prince Louis are old enough to help out. And if Prince Charles does end up minimizing the roles of Princess Beatrice and Princess Eugenie, that just means more work for Prince Harry. What do you think will be the result of Queen Elizabeth's passing? Which members of the royal family are going to step up and who is going to step back? Share your predictions with us in the comments section and then click on the subscribe button for more videos from us here at The Taco. Bye for now!